<laughs> All right, we're going we're, we're back at our women's uh, Bible study, and tonight this is what we're going to be um, studying. Um, we're getting ready to close out. We're getting ready to close out on what we've been studying and uh, which our topic scripture. Do y'all remember where our topic scripture? You might not remember where it is, but what we are exploring and the whole point to these studies. Anybody remember? From the, whoo, from the sun set free is what? Free indeed. Is free. Free indeed. That's it. It's free indeed. And so as we started, we started to understand where our freedom come from, what we were, what Jesus did to create that freedom for us. We know he died, but then we've been studying as to why, what's behind all of that? How did he set us free? What did he set us free from? And what did he set us free to? When we talked about this over the past few weeks, we talked about three particular things that he set us from. Anybody know at least one of them? Was it the sin? Yes. That's it. Guilt, guilt and shame, the penalty of sin. Right. Okay. And it's one more. Do we remember? Okay. So it's that sin that, that was given to us. I can't think of the name. Of the imputed name. sin. Yeah. So we <laughs> talked about. We talked about. Okay. 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 You getting good? <laughs> you getting so so. Let 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 me help all this make sense here. Okay. Uh, let let me help you make make sense because I if I if you if y'all don't have it, then I might be missing or or generating too much information that's not getting you to where you need to be. The first thing he delivered us from was the penalty of sin. Okay, we got to understand, uh, right, the penalty of sin. And then he set us free from uh, the bondage of sin. Okay, and then from the guilt, uh, the guilt and shame of sin. So we know that he had to die a shameful death in order for that uh, sin to be taken away from us, from all that to be taken away from us and put on him. Then we talk about the three types of sin, which is what, you, what you're referring to. We talked about the imputed sin, right? Which is a sin that was placed upon you, which is what happened to Jesus Christ is the fact that he didn't ask for it, but he was sent here to do it. And so everything starting from Adam and Eve all of that sin exchange that happened there was put on him and he carried us and all that we are not to the cross to reconcile us back to God, right? So we talked about imputed sin. Uh, we talked about personal sin, basically making a personal choice to be attached to sin is what we talked about. And then we talked about... Uh, Oh, it was one more, one more. I don't have the right, uh, the right lesson, the right book with me. But uh, we talked about one more sin, and this one actually. Uh, let me go look at my notes here. Sin of inclination. That's right. That sin that has been inherited. We became sinners through the act of rebellion and disobedience. Again, all of this tied up in Genesis are tied up with us from Genesis, okay, which caused us to always fail. But at this point, because of the blood, we don't have to fail. We should not be failing. And I thought about something today um, as I was thinking about the lesson and seeing itself. A lot of people say um, we have, uh, if something happened, we all have fallen short you know, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That is true. The scripture talks about we have all fallen short uh, somewhere. But the thing or the, the key is when we fall short, what do we do after we fall? That's the point. Uh, Donnie McClarkin's song, the song, it says, 
uh, when we fall, we get up again. <laughs> and, in, and I actually found that in a New Living Translation, people saying that ain't the word, but what he was singing was without a New Living Bible, when it stated we get up again, but is how we get up again, if you continue, we get up in repentance, which means we turn away from it. We don't do it again. Yes, we all have fallen. We may fall again, but the point is, we can't keep falling in the same direction because that's a problem. That's kind of like uh, if I keep falling because of my left leg, eventually, what do I need to do? Because of my left leg, my I need to do what? If I keep falling on the left side, what I need to do? Get a cane or, okay, go ahead, Virginia. I think you raised your hand. I'm sorry, I need to promote y'all. Okay. Okay, wait a minute, I'm letting some in. Okay, are y'all there? I'm here. Okay, okay. So you raise your hand to, if I keep falling on my left leg, what is the process of finding out? If I keep falling. What is the process of finding out? Well, maybe process is not it, but what just what am I gonna do? I'm consistently falling on my left side. <laughs> well, you stop walking on your left side, but you, you might need a new leg. Well, somebody said, get it fixed, stop falling. Well, the first thing is I might have to go to the doctor. You know, at this point, if I've been ignoring the fall, I got to figure out why am I falling, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I have to identify some piece of the leg. That's when people find out that they've been falling because their knee joints are giving out or their hip is giving out or they may have had a broken ankle or toe or something. And so what you do is you identify why you're falling and then you get it fixed. You know, you, you said it right, but before you get it fixed, you got to identify what is the problem. So that's why we're saying, yeah, we fall, we get up in repentance, but we got to figure out why is it that us being that Jesus Christ, we know he delivered us from the penalty of sin. We know he delivered us from the bondage of sin. We know that he has delivered us from uh, the guilt and shame of sin. Why is it that we're not experiencing the freedom of the death, burial, and the resurrection? Somebody got some noise in the background, so go ahead and mute. Uh, let's see. Okay. And so we have to figure this out. And that's why we've had these series of studies because we're, our goal is, is to get to the point where we are walking in freedom. But before we can do that, lady, we've got to figure out what is standing in our way. Okay, we, we really do. If you care about your sanity, if you care about your peace of mind, if you care about having joy, um, I guess for a cliche, joy divine, like that joy divine just means that that's joy that surpasses our circumstances uh, in situations where we could crumble. Uh, we don't just have a laugh on the outside, but on the inside, we still have something that we hold on to. That song says, I still have joy after all I've been through. You have not taken my peace, my mind, my joy from me, and I'm still holding on. I'm still moving on as well. And so as we study our main scripture, which is trying to get to the point of understanding what we are free from, when he says whom he set free is free indeed, we also had to address the sin conditions in our lives and the fact that we're delivered from sin and shame. So why is it that sin is so prevalent and why haven't we recognized 
the sin that we have in our lives that keep us from actually experiencing it. I put y'all all on mute. So if you're going to comment, you'll either raise your hand or take yourself off of mute and go ahead and talk. It doesn't matter. And so um, what, what, how are we going to get there? So that's why tonight, you know, we went right on through to, to learn about those three different types of sin, sin of inclination, uh, imputed sin, and personal sin. And now we're at the point to where we started to study not where he, uh, what he saved us from, but what he saved us to. Last uh, week before last, before I took all my breaks that I needed to have, we first started off understanding that Christ had freed us to, uh, to live, to expand our capacity of life, love, peace, uh, joy. Um, and in doing so, that um, is that that's what it's about, is that he wants to give us so much love that it covers a multitude of fault because the problem, well, it's not a problem, but the situation here is we're still living here in a sinful world. We're still living here uh, because of the sins of Adam and Eve. We're still here. And because we are still here, we still attempt it every day to go backwards. We're tempted uh, by, uh, because that's the enemy's job is to constantly take the soul of the ones that God sent and saved, not sent to save, but he sent and saved. We got to understand that that is action. That's not the past. He has saved us. Ain't nothing else. He has saved us. Now we got to find where we're supposed to be in this equation. And so he want us to have a capacity of abundant life that, that he had planned for us in the beginning. And so now tonight, we're going to talk about the other piece of where he freed us to, which includes that he freed us to serve, okay? He freed us to serve. Um. I gave y'all some homework. I don't know if anybody got a chance to do it. I ain't even stressing over it, okay? I put it out there. You can, you can, you don't. But that's what we want to talk about tonight. And so I haven't created a PowerPoint or anything, and I hope you have your Bibles with me, with you, and let's have that conversation. So uh, Shaniqua is sitting here with me, and she's going to read. Um, I'm going to take y'all off mute if y'all don't have no background noise. I'm going to take y'all off mute, okay? So y'all can read and be involved, engaged with me. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got to read it. Um, okay, so she's going to read verses <clears throat> one through five, and that's going to set the stage for where we're trying to go on tonight, okay? And then somebody else can pick up, Ladarian, you're going to pick up five through mm -hmm. 10. They're here, they're here with me, okay? All right, go ahead, Shaniqua. Okay, um, from death to life. In the past, you were spiritually dead because of your sins and the things you did against God. Yes, in the past, your lives were full of those mm -hmm. sins. You lived the way the world lives, following the ruler of the evil powers that are above the earth. That same spirit is now working in those who mm -hmm. refuse to obey God. In the past, all of us lived like mm -hmm. that, trying to please our sinful selves. We did all the things our bodies and minds wanted, like everyone else in the world. We deserve to suffer God's anger just because of the way we were. But God is rich in mercy, and he loved us very much. We were spiritually dead because of all we had done against him, but he gave us new life with Christ. You have been saved by God's grace. I think you went right on through, didn't you? <laughs> oh. She's in the New Living Translation, so you might as well read 9 and 10. <laughs> I think you went to 8. Huh? See, that's five for this one. Okay, all right. All right. So okay, so pick up pick up at six. Come over here so and they can. God hear. raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in, in the in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressing his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not to yourself, it is the gift of God, not by work, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in, G in Christ Jesus 
to do God's work, to do good's work, which God prepared in, in advance for us to do. Okay. Oh, I got the easy to read version. <laughs> she got the easy to read version. So I'm going to make a few statements and then we, we'll go on because we're, although we're here at Ephesians 2 and we're going to make a point out of that at, at the activity that God has saved us to. But for a moment, let's back up to Matthew 28 and uh, verses 16 through 20. And uh, it reads, the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came back to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, you go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the end of the age. Can somebody tonight tell me at what point did Jesus tell this to the disciples? What, what did this instruction follow after, come after? If you're familiar with the Great Commission. Or y'all got a Bible, you got a study Bible with you, that's fine. When was Jesus talking to the to to, to these 12? Okay. Anybody want to try it? Come on. Okay, well, he spoke to these disciples after they were tested, after they accepted him, after they became believers. Some were still in doubt, but at the same time, there were some who believed. And so at that point, he knew he had to go away, right? But this was even after his resurrection, at the time of which he had destroyed all the works of the enemy, sin was dead, and now they had a job to do. And their job was to go out and to teach his gospel to the world. Go out and be a witness. You know, they had to be full of the Holy Ghost. We hadn't gotten to that yet. But the basic of what was going on here is that he had they their freedom was there, but they had to understand the duty that came after their freedom. Does this make sense, to everybody? And so, yes. yeah. So when I thought about it, I think that this is how, and this is just my opinion, and y'all give me your your feedback. But I think this is how most of us get set back in life, even, even though we're Christians or saints or whatever we want to call ourselves, even though we love Christ, we know Jesus, we, we worship, we praise, we pray, but somewhere along the way, we lose focus because we don't do the assignment that he commanded us to do when we accepted Christ. That makes sense. And so it's real easy to fall short as we talk about we fall short of the glory of God because we're not on our job. So I was thinking, I said, well, I was thinking if we could gauge how that looks, it might start at taking a look at 24 hours a day, uh -huh. seven days a week. Mm -hmm. and see what your structure of teaching about Christ is about. How do you do that? When do you do that? Okay. And, and you know what's so bad about it, y'all? We we're probably going to always have to have these, like, come back next year, and at the same time, got to be sending the same message. <laughs> you know why? Because, like, centuries change. Dynamics of the world change. And so they come to captivate us. Like back when 
you know, ladies, the, the circumstances were different. And so ladies did their work, but that whole family of God, they did things differently. So in other words, for us as women, we went to a punch a clock, right? And, and, and back when they didn't punch a clock, they, they worked. It didn't mean that they did not work, but that time was a part of who that family was. That was their duty. They were doing things of God, period. We here now, that's why we have to be careful. Some people don't even look at the job that they have because they'll just take any job. They never thought about the work of Christ. And they'll say, honey, I got to work. And so if it comes on Sunday, that's okay. If they work in seven days a week, if it means swing shifts, up shift, down shift, we don't realize that sometimes we're taking that on and then we're wondering why after all the money that we're working, that we're making, why isn't it that we have more joy in our lives, more abundance of peace, more abundance of hope, because we can easily slip into everything else except for the duty that we have been given because we love Jesus Christ Amen. and we confess to him. Amen. Pastor just walked in. And so, <laughs> and so y'all ever thought about that? You know, having to, you know, that's why you have to be careful with your 24 hours and how you're going to assign it. And no, that's uh, not exactly, um, that's not every, everybody's fate or we don't have to be at church. I use it as an example. So I'm, I'm going to read something I think that's important to read here at this point. But um, but since that's how we give or we think that's the only way we're supposed to serve, which is not, you got to understand that, okay, who, is somebody in the bathtub? Y'all gonna have to go uh, on mute. <laughs> I hear you. Okay, don't tell it. Don't tell it. Just keep on bathing and listening. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's not me. <laughs> Just keep on. I know it feels good to you. And so at least you're getting that word in. <laughs> but uh, you got to. Y'all, sometimes we have to stop and realize that we haven't done the first work that God has called us for. And we know that it can start what? Right at home. Okay? Right at home. And then we spread that abroad. I'm going to read something to you because I think this is important. Um, as the disciples were sent out, okay, and they had work to do. It says, uh, this author says here, the preaching of the gospel is centered on, this is the first thing, when we do go out, this is what we're teaching, repentance and forgiveness of sins, okay? I want to stop there because that's why we're talking about this. We're not talking about this to, um, to kill anybody by the letter, but we're trying to give you, get, get us all to the point that we understand that it's that it, that death can't hold us down, sin can't hold us down. Okay, this we were forgiven, so we got to teach others to know that. And then if there's and repent because that's the message that Christ wants us to teach. The next thing is He wants us to teach uh, or show them the promise of receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit, so that the Holy Spirit can teach us, lead, and guide us through all things. And then the exhortation to separate from, get this, a corrupt generation. That's what I, I was really meaning. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We got to make sure that we're not of the world. And so it's easy sometimes if we're not on our J-O-B, is that we get confused, we get, you know, fuzzed. I was listening to a minister today and um, he um, had been to another minister's um, service. He had been to another minister's service 
and they get the spat on who was the right prophet, who was real and who was not real, and went to YouTube and both of them, I'm like, this is crazy. Because what happened is we have people who, who have even accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, but because of distraction and all, they have disconnected themselves because of this activity. That ain't why. That ain't why I don't believe in my heart. But I do believe in my heart as I made up my mind one time that no matter what everybody else's philosophy was, what gave me abundant life is what I was going to stick with. Because I found my peace. And other people are still looking, but I found it. When he called me, I answered and I searched for what I was looking for that was going to give me the life in Christ and the power that I needed to function through life circumstances. So then the purpose, now get this, you got to understand this too. The purpose is to make disciples who will observe Christ's commandments who will observe, who will honor Christ's commandments. You know, the Bible says, or Jesus said, if you love me, then you do what? That's it. Keep my commandments. You keep my commandments. And so we have to learn now that we've had that assignment where he has saved us to, he saved us to keep his commandments. I, I know that's tough sometimes. That's tough for us here just being an inner person or a human being with particles and all that kind of stuff and then it's tough when we have loved ones because loved ones we're trying to teach and you know that the bible tells us that prophets are not honored in their own home so it's tough for some people not to compromise because their love for their loved ones is greater and they forget that regardless you're going to be hated by the world. And sometimes that means that these loved ones we have, they're a part of the world. And we still have to do our Christian duty, even with them, mm. even when they don't understand, right? Then this is what I like. He said, Christ does not intend that evangelism and missionary witness results only in conversation decisions. Spiritual energies must not be concentrated in merely enlarging church membership, but in making mm -hmm. disciples who separate themselves from the world, observe Christ's commandments, and follow him with all their heart, mind, and will. So I don't want none of y'all stop coming to church on Sunday or when we call y'all to, but I'm trying to tell you that y'all have a job to do on Monday. You have a job to do on Tuesday. You have a job to do on Wednesday. It does, it does not stop at the church because we put on church uh, appreciation, the pastor's appreciation, family and friends day. That is not it. That is not the ministry of Christ. So we have to refocus. That's our gathering time for our fellowship and worship and love for the brotherhood and all that kind of stuff. It's good for brethren to dwell together in unity dwell together we we lean on each other we get more energy we revive uh we renew we reconcile we do all of this and we get back to work again that's why we come together we do that so we can get strength to go back to work on monday not back at potlatch not back at shekinah services we're talking about back on and if you do have a job that's why you gotta make sure that when you're among the brethren that you are living Christ in front of them because you're the only Bible that some of them will ever read. And so it's real easy to be a witness on the job. Like I did a twofold. When I worked seven years at Potlatch, uh, uh, these, and I know it can be done. Many people are scared. Well, uh, you know, we don't want to talk about Christ on the job. We don't want to do this or that. Listen, I had a full-fledged atheist, Okay. A full-fledged atheist that worked in management. And when I got there, what I did for Christ, when they we had a real-time video and I was in charge of it and I could schedule what was going to run on that video throughout the meal. So on Sundays, I knew I would not be there, right? 
So I knew they would be there in the meal. But I would put scriptures or some type of video while I was gone, it would run through the meal. <laughs> and the management came against me and said, hey, you know, I go in the office and he's like, Clarissa, some of them don't want this and blah, blah, blah. You know, and I said, oh, they don't. And uh, he said, yeah, you're you going to have to change your, your, your video and, and put something else up there. I said, well, I want you to call. I said, right there, I fingered exactly who it was. I said, can you call Miss such and so in this office? He said, why do you want me to call him? I said, because he's the atheist in the bunch. And I said, I got something to say. Y'all, I could have been fired. I really could have been fired. Lord have mercy. I did not think about that. <laughs> but when he came in, I had been seeing him wear his t-shirt that had a no sign on it, like Jesus. I am an atheist. All kind of stuff, graphics on his t-shirt. And I said, the only way I take down that real-time video, if he take off them t-shirts. I believe in Christ. He does not. And we both have the same rights. Oh, he wasn't willing to do that. So Clarissa, I, uh, uh, uh. Sometimes we have to be bold. That's what we've been mm -hmm. called to, to do. You know, and, and I promise you that by the time I left, both of my jobs, the one I had where I was working at the newspaper, when you were fresh and what I call my get saved for real confession, there were people on that job who had never been to church before. Job, I, used to take, uh, I used to take a day. <laughs> I used to take a daily bread book and I would make a copy of the devotion and I would put it on all of the um, workers desk. I had one girl come up against me and she said uh, she didn't want it. To this day, that girl is my good friend. Her mom got sick and almost died. You know who they came up in there and called? Yeah. She, she had told them. They called me and said, Clarissa, you need to pray for her mama. And so when I went, I, I was reluctant. I ain't going to lie. I'm like, shoot, she been giving me all these problems. <laughs> and now she want me to pray because her mama died. Her mama, they said, we're going to die. But I got up. I was learning, y'all. And I prayed. When she left that advance and got to the hospital, her mama was sitting up on the side of the bed. You know what? I'm going to mute y'all again. You know what? She became a believer. She became and a friend of mine. Several so. That's the difference. Even though we're in the 21st century, ladies, where we have to go to work, we have to take Jesus with us because that's our assignment. We are disciples. You don't have to be in the pulpit. You don't. But I tell you this, if we did this like we're supposed to, I bet you we would have better lives. We'd have greater friendships. We wouldn't have dissension in the church. You wouldn't be worried about who was doing this and who wasn't doing that because you already know you talk about time you got the fellowship. You know you'd already done your job. You had already done what the Lord commanded your hands to do before there was any other assignment. Wouldn't be no gossiping, no peace breaking, no busy bodying, because we would be busy. Now, that's when you be busy doing your father's, going about your father's business. There is a benefit to going about your father's business. And according to the scripture, that love that covers a multitude of fault, it says that that, that love hardly ever notices when other people do you wrong. Mm -hmm. So you be praying, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be attentive to little this and little that, because I guarantee you that's the enemy. And that's all he ever wants. Our homes would be better. Our jobs, our communities would be better because we would be setting a standard. Now let's go to uh, the questions that I ask you tonight, I'm looking at our time um, and you can unmute when you do. I gave you question number one out of this. Um, question number one, let's see. Um, okay, anybody got it on text? Here I go. 
Let me go. Question number one. What is the relationship between our previous studies and verse one? And we're talking about Ephesians 2. And it says, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. And you might need to, let me let me look at this version I got going on up here. <laughs> yeah, you got two versions going on. And, and here's the deal. When I tell you to study the chapter, one chapter, uh, you go and I'll teach some of you that don't know. You study that, but you go find out the basic. It, sometimes it's good for you to start at chapter one so that you can read into two and then go to three before you can see, extend your study, okay? So that you can see. And then the questions are designed for research, okay? So if we take a look at verse two, I mean, verse one in Ephesians, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. What is that relationship to, to what we've been studying? The key word, let me tell you this, who the key word is were, W-E-R. Let me give you a hint. The key word, I want you to think about it, y'all. The key word, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. On one version, it said used, used to be. <laughs> used to be. But can you hear me? I do now. I didn't hear you okay. then. Go ahead. Quickened is a key word. Okay. Let's go with it. It says, and you have the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. And um, so quickened being made alive. Mm -hmm. That would turn around that whole situation. Booyah, come you know. on. Keep it going. <laughs> Keep it going. Keep it going. That's right. This this should make us smile. Come on, Regina. Yeah. Ex expand on that from, from well, the whole situation. Just that one thing where he said where you were dead in trespasses and sins, whatever you identify as trespasses and sins, if you were dead in it and now he's quickened you and made you alive, then you should no longer be in that. I see it. That's something to shout about, ain't it? So mm -hmm. he's talking to a particular people because everybody, everybody ain't out. <laughs> they should be, but everybody's not. So to me, to me, that those little things right there are my thank you, Lord moments. And then number two, it says, look at, let's go on and then y'all can have, what does the scripture mean when it implies that we obeyed the devil? That's probably verse two. And I'm looking at different um, versions, okay? Which probably gonna be children of disobedience. So verse two says, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Right. It still ties with verse one, doesn't it? Yes. The fact that you came out of a disobedient situation and now you're not like the rest. And there's an assignment in front of, in front of you. Uh, number three, can you identify to obeying the voice of the enemy now or the savior and explain? So what I mean is after you get the point of verse one and two, how, how has that changed in identifying uh, your savior's voice, his, his, yes. his, his direction and the enemy now? What's, what's there? Because you've, you've created a relationship or you're, uh, you as you begin to give of yourself, you are able to recognize the voice of God because He said, "My sheep know My voice, and another I will they will not hear." So as we become, uh, as if we build a relationship, it's just like if I know you, and I don't have to be in your presence, but if I hear your voice. I said, oh, that's, that sounds like 
Clarissa Pace, you know, and 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 I don't I don't even have to see your face, mm-hmm. but I can just hear your voice, you know, and know, or I can hear you sing and say, oh, I know who that is. Mm-hmm. So we would we, we develop that relationship. So the more intimate we become with him, mm-hmm. the more in tuned right. we will recognize his voice. Right. He's not he's not a stranger to us. We are not strangers to him. He is now our shepherd. And when we hear his voice, we follow his voice. And at this point in our lives, we should recognize the difference between his voice and the enemy's voice. I equate that to, now this is, this is all I, you know, I'm very simple, but I know I used to watch cartoons and there would be, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Shanique would watch the same cartoons. <laughs> She's years younger than me. But the yeah. angel would be on one yeah. side and the devil on the other side. <laughs> oh, and you would always have to make a choice between the two. And that's what we have now is, is that we should be able to know when the enemy is coming after us. And we do that also by his word. Okay, y'all forgive my grandbaby for she know not what she do. Okay, the next question is, anybody want to expound on that? Anybody else? Okay, so what is considered the works of the flesh? In verse three, it says, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Y'all, I will say this. It is hard for people to admit this. Mm -hmm. It is so hard for people to ever admit that they have fallen short and they have walked in. This this is a problem too, because that's a testimony. That's not, we just said that he delivered us from the guilt of sin and shame. To me, there are two things that was, well, it might be three things that will stop us from testifying about who we used to be. Number one, if we don't know who we are now, <laughs> okay. Number two, if we're still in it, okay. Mm-hmm. And number three, if we're still carrying the shame of it. Mm-hmm. And that's what that's why I keep saying whom the son said free is free indeed, because I right. want people. Right who understand you don't have to be held up anymore and you have a choice to live in this dispensation of time of which God has set us free. Okay? So the works of the flesh, 5, 19 through 24. The acts of the flesh are obvious. NIV. Sexual immorality. Mm. Impurity. Uh, debauchery is that the way you say that yes one version i think it says uh sensuality idolatry and witchcraft um hatred variance variances what you say i just said variances okay discord um another version says strife jealousy Fits of rage. Go ahead. Yeah, what you said. That's it. Strive. Uh, Right. Selfishness. Okay, go right ahead on. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and look here at this version. It said, okay, dissensions, factions. I got another version that said rival rivalries. Dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the reveling, reveling, okay, murdering, uh huh, okay. Why don't you go back and define some of those? I know you were gonna ask that tonight, and I said (laughs) I didn't really want to (laughs) get down to it. Come on. Oh yeah, we got to get down to it. Okay. Let's get down to it then. So let's define some of them. Y'all help me. Let's look them up. Okay. 
because I started to print the whole definition of every every last one of them. So, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but I didn't. I didn't know if y'all wanted to if have, you have time. Which yeah. one is there in particularly? Let's talk. Let me see. We can say debauchery. Just yeah. some of the words that we don't use in day to day language. Okay. Um, and then any of them, we could just break them down to their bare bare bones because I think that sometimes um, people know scriptures and things like that and they can read them to you but we do not speak in the 16th century English Who was so it almost English? seems that it's not applicable to us huh debauchery is excessive indulgence in sensual pleasures mm -hmm. See? See, I have another one that said extreme indulgence in bodily pleasures and it's sexual, mm -hmm. sexual yeah. pleasures. Y'all better, y'all better hear something. Y'all better hear me. Why we putting hot rocks and and wax and hot what? Oh, okay, Britt. Now wait a minute. Now, <laughs> okay, I'm I'm just, but, but, uh, but seriously, no, seriously, what I was about to say was, um, oh Lord, I lost my train of thought. But she said uh, bodily, see, because sometimes people think that's only one form of <laughs> one form of sex. Okay come on come on and when you when you're talking about your flesh and you're talking about sensual pleasures and stuff people think if you don't go to a certain area then you're not participating in that oh well okay yeah. make it plain okay yeah because 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 this this goes on to say behavior that involves both sex drugs and alcohol mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and wow listen him and wow part you, you know but you know you know it, it was a minister i heard earlier um earlier the, he was saying just because you're in the church don't mean you're in the kingdom mm -hmm. mm. that's true too do you get that mm. yeah you you can be so but if you're not the see there the, the wheat and the tear is growing together okay see? Mm -hmm. And so you can be in what you say is a place uh, uh, where you are, but if you you don't you can be there, but that doesn't mean you're ne necessarily a part of it. Mm -hmm. You gotta mm -hmm. know, know that where we really are, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. if we're not connected to the kingdom, we 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 might be connected to the wrong thing you know right <laughs> yeah. no. not, uh, uh, not when the weed and the tares are separated okay <laughs> it is. i was reminded this week of uh of uh, a saying that my apostle sometimes had when he would say people fulfill their uh religious obligations on sunday mm -hmm. and you know i think about some of the people i used to work with i won't get too descriptive of them but um they would say, oh, I just love going to church on Sunday. I just get a really good feeling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So Everybody I think that's say. why. Huh? Everybody's <laughs> face. Okay. Yeah. You, hey, you know, it's just like uh, many, I don't know, God asked me this. When you were saying that, uh, Sister Regina, um, the Lord spoke to me many times and, you know, the feel good and the emotions and the dancing. Mm -hmm. And he asked, he said, B.B. King could sing the blues. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Make you cry. Right. So if you're in the church and you're crying, where are your tears coming from? Are, mm -hmm. are they just your emotions? Right. Or are they from the Holy Spirit? You know what I'm saying? Are you, mm -hmm. what you're feeling? Is it, is it God? And then mm -hmm. he said that Michael Jackson could, his music could play and your feet will start tapping mm -hmm. just because you're tapping and, and moving in the church is it from the holy spirit or right. again is it just your emotions wow. mm -hmm. there is a difference mm -hmm. you can shed tears but they don't that doesn't mean that there are tears that mm -hmm. really matter in the heart mm -hmm. you see because the tears that really matter in the heart from our heart really are precious to God. And mm -hmm. he knows whether those tears are pure mm -hmm. or they just 
you know, hey, mm -hmm. you know, you, you got people that can cry crocodile tears and be lying all at the same time oh, yeah. oh, and really yeah. telling the truth <laughs> y'all see some young people in here they got their hands raised hiding behind their tears hiding <laughs> behind their dance making somebody think that they got something that ain't really what they have mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. lord have mercy that's on y'all i ain't do this y'all you yeah. know <laughs> it's funny because i think we've been conditioned Mm. Um, to have this mundane mentality about going to church every Sunday. And as long as you're inside that building, then you're okay. But I like what Sister Sharon said. Mm. Uh, you can be in the church and not be of the kingdom because it's in your mindset. So mm -hmm. if you haven't been transformed by the renewing of your mind mm -hmm. and really have a relationship with Christ, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then you're not a part of the kingdom. You're just going to church. Mm. And, and it's out of routine, you know, uh, where, like you said, whether you're in there singing, you're dancing, you're crying, or whatever, it is because that's how you've been conditioned to behave. Mm. Mm. Right. There's not right. a connection. Mm. Amen. You know, because, so how do we fix that, Pastor Pace? How do we, how do we get the people to understand? Mm. Well, but, you know, can I just interject one other thing when you were saying that, uh, yeah. Sister Terrica? You see, God doesn't dwell in brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. And because we enter into those, you know, assemblies that are made of brick and mortar, mm -hmm. we think that we have really been to, you know, we call it the church, okay? Mm -hmm. But when we recognize that what enters into that brick and mortar, mm -hmm. what walks inside of those gates or what walks inside of those doors mm -hmm. is the real concern that God has because that's the church. Mm -hmm. That's the temple mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Because he said, you know, he said, don't let, don't defile your temple. You can't defile brick and water. Mm -hmm. He's talking about this earthen vessel that he created. Mm -hmm. We are not to defile this temple. We're not to let things mm -hmm. dwell unclean in this temple. So mm -hmm. when we walk into the brick and mortar, mm -hmm. what when, when we walk in, then we assemble these temples, okay, mm -hmm. to become one. Because there are many members in the body. Mm -hmm. Many members, but there's only one body. Mm -hmm. When one hurts, the other one hurts. Mm -hmm. My God, I, I could I could talk about that, y'all. Mm -hmm. But when we we got to understand and, and stop re referring to the church as brick and mortar mm -hmm. and start referring to it as us mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. amen amen any other comments that you know what we used to say just say ouch <laughs> and keep moving uh idolatry idolatry um uh it says is the worship of an idol as though it were God. It can be person, place, or thing. And it can be yourself. <laughs> person, place, or thing. Right, right. <laughs> and a lot we, of people we, think of hey, but We got to look at self first, okay? Right. Which we is could, idolatry, you know, self. Mm -hmm. And what, not what, even recognizing, looking outside of everything except self. Regina, and what did you say? Mm -hmm. What did you say? I just said, yeah, many people think that idols are only statues or something of that nature, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. They don't really see it as a person, place, or thing, like any noun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And you know what I also found out? It can be intangible. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It can be intangible. Mm hmm. Uh, this it's is anything a, basically you put before God. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You hold you hold in higher esteem than, than that. Then you are uh, you're mm -hmm. participating in idolatry, right? And sometimes people put the whole church <laughs> mm -hmm. in front of God. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yep. they okay. forget that. Yeah, that's right. Witchcraft. Okay. That's interpreted as divination, sorcery, uh, little witchcraft, or it can be intangible witchcraft, 
Mm -hmm. Let us use our mouths on people. Mm. Mm. We can cast witchcraft. And, 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 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can cast judgment. That's a part of witchcraft. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell y'all something. Uh, two Saturdays ago, uh, I was at um, a service and the prophet um, came up to me. Well, I've had this experience before then, but Jim remember this. We had this experience when we were somewhere else. And, uh, but as he spoke to me about a certain thing, he turned back around and he looked at Jerome and myself and he said, witchcraft was being worked against me. I'm like, what well, he said, he, he said, didn't want to say it. And he said, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. And then he said, check your, check your back door. I'm like, check, we don't have a back door. But he saw something laid down and he saw all this. He, he began to call out how uh, my character was trying to be defamed. He said, I see it all around you. He said, your character. Um, I see these people, these people just working against you. And he said, it's not because you did anything. It's because what God is getting ready to take you to. But he began to be specific about some stuff in this service. I'm like, oh my God. But I, I do remember, you know, different things. And he said, and he turned, he went to walk away and he said, that thing in your body is ratchet. He, he, he talked, I was like, oh my God. You know, I couldn't walk on my left side and how bad that was hurting. And he said, that's where that's coming from. Now he didn't know all of that. I'm just saying, we don't know how we cross the line either Amen. because we can make that happen. Hatred, of course, that's, uh, that's crossing, crossing the line of dislike. Some mm -hmm. people dislike something, but when you get to the point, that's why I say I'll be careful. You know, even when we're talking about other races, we might recognize different things, but we don't want to be caught. Amen. You see what I'm saying? We don't want to be caught. Yeah, we're going to use wisdom, but we don't want to be caught hating anybody. Amen. Amen. And when you were talking about witchcraft just a moment ago, uh, it took me a while to really understand it. it it's not, it, it, it is, it can operate in us when we try to control mm -hmm. somebody. It's, that's right. Um. Mm -hmm. That's 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 mm -hmm. that's a form of witchcraft, you know. So we have to be so careful when we want people to do it like our us or do it this way, you know. And we're trying to control it, and if they don't control, if we're not able to control them like we think we should, then we become dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. That's a form of witchcraft. Manipulation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so discord is to say and do things which cause distrust among one another, which results in arguments and fights. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the Lord said he hate discord. Mm -hmm. and it, when, we, when we fight in, among each other and, and mm -hmm. try to tear each other down and Mm -hmm. he, that's evil you know that's evil mm -hmm. uh fits of rage anger god help us lord sporadic anger <laughs> mm. quick to anger mm -hmm. <laughs> you know selfishness selfish ambitions moving moving having another agenda but it's built around yourself mm. okay uh what is dissension? It's in the Bible. It's in the yeah. Bible. Uh, dissension is, wow, is, uh, it's bonded up like this. It's a discord, strife, conflict, contention, dissension, various means, variance means a state or condition marked by a lack of agreement or harmony. Mm-hmm. It implies an intrinsic or essential lack of harmony producing quarreling, 
fact, uh, F A C T I O U S ness. What is it? Actions. Okay. Oh, facetiousness. What? Factitiousness. What did you say? F A C T I O U S N E S S. Oh, I didn't get this. <laughs> or antagonism. Hmm. Oh, Lordy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh. And I, <laughs> can we move on, Regina? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, in some of these things, mm -hmm. if we are honest, we find ourselves in some of these things, mm -hmm. which we need to, to fall on our face that we can be set free mm -hmm. and 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 operate mm -hmm. not in the, the 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 fleshly things but in the fruit of the spirit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and that's one thing we should all have is the fruit of the spirit mm -hmm. and the gifts are different for each one but the fruit and if you know it never said fruits it says fruit fruit mm -hmm. right right but we talk about gifts it says gifts mm -hmm. but so we should all have the same fruit of the spirit but we have different gifts in the spirit mm -hmm. and so envy uh is over is is uh what, it's envy envy want and desire for others others that can be that's another one of those things it can be uh pe a person place a thing <laughs> it can be yeah. what mm -hmm. other people have and that, it yeah it could be your anointing your gift your talent it can be your car your house your man your woman your children um your job mm-hmm and so I think the uh, next next one do we do we understand that one drunkenness? These girls drunk. over here, you don't just have to be drunk on alcohol. Right, mm -hmm. right. There, are, there are many forms of drunkenness where you just out of these kids drunken loose. <laughs> okay, all right, girls. What they say? They, Drunken love, drunken lust. They said drunken love, drunken lust. <laughs> hey. Okay. But what does that mean to be drunk? What is what is drunken then if you take it out of that context? Drunken love, what does that mean? Okay, y'all, come on. What is drunken love? Mm hmm. <laughs> It's not. It's not the agape love. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what you say, Kim? This time it's so solely centered around the person that you in love with. So like you forget about everything is them. Mm -hmm. Everything is about them, mm -hmm. and you just be around here retarded. <laughs> did y'all hear? Retarded like me, Drew. Did you? <laughs> did y'all hear her? Not all of it. A little bit. Not all of it. Yeah. She she said she said it's like everything is centered around that other person, everything, and you become intoxicated with them. And they was like, like it is if you had taken a drink, you know, out of your mind. But that and and everything you do is centered around them. Wow. Uh, but when you when you talk about drunken love, uh, that could apply to that person, place, or thing too. Mm -hmm. Now, in my Bible reference, it says uh, intoxication, in ebra, in I I n e b r a t. -R. I think it means the same thing. <laughs> a state in which a person is overwhelmed or overpowered with spirituous liquors, so that his reason is disordered. He reels okay. and he rocks staggers in their walking wow. uh, to a point of stupor, oh. furious, habitual, disorderly conduct. Wow. Okay. And so the rest of us said orgies and the like. Ladies, do we know what orgies are? 
Yes. 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 Okay. I'll just walk. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. We know we know the definition. Okay, so we have to define. <laughs> what? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. I want to go back to the fruit of the spirit real quick because the scripture does define the fruit of the spirit. You know, yes. mm -hmm. and uh, actually, in our English language, we don't use the S on fruit nearly as much as people do. Mm -hmm. But the fruit of the spirit—that's what—that's what people see in you. Mm -hmm. If your spirit is within you, that's what they see. Mm -hmm. And so that spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, mm -hmm. goodness, faith, meekness, temperance mm -hmm. against such there is no law. So some of that ought to be oozing out of us as we walk with people. People ought to be able to see some of that mm -hmm. if uh, we are walking by and led by the spirit every day. Mm -hmm. I like to say oozing out. You know, I hear people. <laughs> <laughs> I hear people also that have this and lord i'm praying for more love lord i'm praying for more joy lord no pray that the lord will stir mm -hmm. up the fruit of the spirit in your life because mm -hmm. if he does mm -hmm. the love joy peace long suffering kindness faithfulness that's there all that gentleness and self-control mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. now when you find mm -hmm. some of it missing that's for you personally like to go that. to the altar because you know what if you don't have it you're going to be tested in it and so you're going to be tested, you know that, until that part of you is disciplined to come subject to what God has put in you. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a mm -hmm. personal thing. And I did move too fast because what I, what I had in mind to close out was that relates to the question that we asked was number 24. It said, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified mm -hmm. So we, we want to close so we won't bleed mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. 19 to 21 mm -hmm. and keep bleeding. And uh, mm -hmm. back to 24, we're still whom the sun set free is free indeed, because those who are mm -hmm. connected to Christ, they crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Your love. Right. Yes. Your love and your actions. Once you get in this thing, uh, will actually begin to take control of that flesh. It will outdo the flesh in our lives. We don't have to just sit up and make decisions every day about the flesh. If we made a decision to do what we've been called to do, we've been called to serve. We've been called to commission and teach this uh, love of Christ, right? And so if you're busy mm -hmm. with that, those things are not as hard to get. I know, I know people probably hate for me to say this, but I know from my own testimony that I won't look back at this. I won't be caught up in this because I, somebody said, I think this weekend I'm focused. I got tonal vision. I got my right, eyes on the prize. Right, right. And ain't nothing else is coming to make me uh, gear towards any of the rest of this stuff. And that's how it happens. Yes, people yep. will oftentimes say, how can I do this? They think, actually, Lord, thank you, Holy Ghost. They yeah. think fasting and praying does it. But according yeah. to the word, it ain't the fasting and praying that does this. It is your ability to do the will of your father that does this for you. Because your primary, this is not your primary goal anymore. My primary goal is not to have somebody I'm drunk and in love with no more. You know what I'm saying? I, that I, that's mm -hmm. not my primary goal. My primary goal is to please the father now. Now that I know him, now that I've gotten to build a relationship or build a relationship with him. So I'm spending time worshiping. I'm spending time learning him. Okay. And wow. these things are destroyed. They destroy the works of the flesh. That's what destroys the work of the flesh. Man, ain't that good news? Mm -hmm. that's, that's really good news for somebody who think that they have to be in sin or they can't break away from the things that has had them bound to me that was good news to me strongholds are different and we're going to study those but this right here sin don't live here no more come on i want y'all to say sin does not live here anymore sin, sin, sin does, does not, not live, live here anymore, anymore. oh y'all gotta the say song. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah
mm-hmm. to trust. It's not nearly as hard as we make it to believe. Mm-hmm. It's not hard to get on our knees and or say something like reveal the enemy. Mm-hmm. We don't have to read 10 scriptures every time we need him to work for us. Mm-hmm. We can just say, Lord, help. And he's there. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. That's where my mind went a moment ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. That's it. That Lord help. Cause that was, that was a simple prayer. Wasn't it? That was a simple mm-hmm. prayer. Just like mm-hmm. Jesus. Well, <laughs> right. Right. You know, it's very simple. It, it the God, didn't send anything in our lives that was complex, believe it or not. <laughs> People, I, and I know he didn't cause of what he's done for me. You know, I mean, I'm not trying to be ugly, but Regina here to testify, I don't have, I, I had like book sense, but like I never got jokes in. You know, it took me a minute mm-hmm. to read the parables. I would just like to decide. <laughs> You know, when Jesus had to give, <laughs> Jesus had to give, you know, the disciples a parable to get them to understand. Well, <laughs> Regina used to be my tutor when I was a kid. I'm just saying. Now I made straight A's, but there was something that never was clicking when something came. I can be honest with man. Y'all don't want y'all act like y'all been smart and all that kind of stuff like that. But listen, I know that when the Holy Ghost, <laughs> when I received the power of the Holy Ghost. I was mm-hmm. smart. I was like changed. I could think, you know, where I wasn't thinking. I could exercise wisdom where I didn't exercise wisdom. It just stuff just wasn't clicking. A B plus C D just didn't equal A D to me. The right mm-hmm. thing, I couldn't get that. But that's the joy that I have. I know I'm a witness to what God can do. So to me, He's simple. He's not complicated. And when I read mm-hmm. the word of the Lord, the reason I come this way, I'm, I'm trying to learn how to teach it to everybody because it be in my spirit and I'm trying to get it out. But when God speaks to me, it, he speaks to me in, in a practical, simple way. And that's what Sister Regina is saying. It doesn't take all that. I mean, we're going to give all that because Lord knows I get so excited. I'm going to run because by the time we get down there. Yeah, I ain't talking about the praise and the worship now. I ain't talking it. about that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. But in, in Sister Sharon, you said something. I had said something to somebody this week how we had people who would roll under the pews at the church and stuff. And mm-hmm, he, it mm-hmm. would just, you know, it would just call their husband had cut out or whatever Fair else. Queen. But I'm trying to get us to the point to see that when we come through the doors, the Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, didn't it? Oh, Mm -hmm. and his Mm -hmm. courts with what? Praise. The only way you can do that is you bring the victory with you. Nobody has Mm -hmm. to ever say a word. Nobody has to ever pump it. Nobody ever has to preach anything. You won't get to that pew and sit there. You won't get there. I'm waiting for the day that the people are so free indeed that when you come through that door, when you dart those doors of the house of worship or the house of prayer, when you get there, you're already praying, you're already worshiping, you're already Mm -hmm. in victory. And that's the mistake we make because we come there, listen, and the fellowship time, we come not knocking it, but the only reason we come sometime at the altar is when we don't know we're free. And so we come up there and what we should be coming for at that time is we come for the real miracles, signs and and miracles and wonders and all them things. That's when we fast and we pray because we need to fast and pray over somebody's got cancer. You understand what I'm saying? The Mm -hmm. things that really can't be controlled. We need to fast and pray. You see what I'm saying? Over this country. (laughs) When oh, we know, God, yeah. when you know that somebody else is trying, you know what I'm saying? We need to fast and pray. We got some more things that we can fast and pray over other than, than really the works of the flesh because we can resolve that. Amen. Yeah. We have yeah. the power to Amen. resolve that. And that's that's what this lesson, and I'm going to close out with it tonight. But y'all, that's exactly what's been in my heart is that we are a women who uh, we realize, I'm going to tell you something else I realized. 
and, and I'm having to go back because I slipped. That's why I said Sunday. I know my sin. I know my slip. We all got to, un we all got to admit our own. Not, we don't, mm. now there are times where you confess one to another. The Bible says that, but your first confession got to be with, between you and God. You have an opportunity. You have a closed closet. The Bible speaks of that. You know, that's why he talked about in praying. You don't pray in the, uh, in the synagogue and all out front and all that running and hoopla with a robe on and all that kind of stuff, you know, because you got to go to your father. He's your father. And you've got to say, daddy, this is what I told my kid. If you can't say in the morning, daddy, I love you and have that type of compassion. I dare you to practice it. Daddy, I love you. Praise God. You know, because we've gotten, we've gained that type of relationship. Oh, Lord have mercy. I feel that. Oh, I feel that. Daddy, I love you. And I love you because you first loved me. Like, I ain't saying that just because mama said that now. I'm saying that because I realize. Right, right. Yeah, I realized that for myself. And I thank you, Lord, that you sent your son to Calvary. I understand that now. I understand that it's not just the play and it's not just happening in April. <laughs> I understand the resurrection power of God. And to the point, mm -hmm. and that's what I said to my son. I said, that's why I got to watch what I say all over again. That's my sin. I fell off because I know God has given me power and I can call a thing and it either, it either going to go away or it's going to come to pass. We all have that power. And that's what we have to exercise. That's what Jesus has done for us. He's given us that power. He's trans. He's transferred that thing to us. They said, now I took all your sin. I put it on my back. I took all them stripes. I took all of that, uh, that misunderstanding, that disgust. I took all that, all that stuff that y'all thinking y'all still got to deal with even your sickness and disease i took all of that to the cross i took every bit of it and i didn't even ask for it my dad woke me up and got me out of heaven and brought me down here i didn't I, that wasn't that wasn't the plan mm -hmm. but i came and you know he was willing because when he went to the garden of gethsemane nevertheless not my will yeah. Ooh, I'm sorry. I didn't have y'all over tonight. But listen, uh, the final thing, we all have work to do, ladies. Spread the word. Spread the word. And, and I want y'all to talk about this on our uh family uh page too. Our Amen. conversations, if you don't, if you don't mind, there's a purpose for, for giving these nuggets and sharing them with the great I am temple family and then our group me. Because we y'all got to help me disciple yeah. the ministry. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. now, you can lead them to the horse. I understand what people say. Mm -hmm. But God still ain't, ain't left that burden. He ain't lifted that burden yet. Mm -hmm. And we got you got to help. But, you know, you just but you know, there's God. only there's only so much uh, Brit that is 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 uh, is our responsibility. Leading them to the water mm -hmm. is our responsibility. Mm -hmm. God takes over and makes them drink. That's it. Uh, Power planet, Apollos water, and God give the increase. There we go. So verse 10, and I'm done. It says, but okay. we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay. Wow. Yes. That's Ooh, it. Thank you, Lord. It's done. Jesus. It's done. It is what? <laughs> it is finished. Y'all got yeah, that? <laughs> it is finished. Yes, it is. I'm trying to. Did I share or unshare? Did have I unshared? Okay, I was unshared. I thought all that time I was sharing, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought y'all saw that, but I was unsharing. Anybody okay. have any final comments? Um, Anything that might have pricked you real good tonight that you want to share before we go? Okay. Sister Terrica said one thing, and I, I know we got to go, y'all. When she was saying you can lead them, you got to lead them to the water. So, 
Regina. Mm -hmm. Regina, I'm sorry, but but you can't make them. You know, you can't make nobody drink the water, but you can lead them to the water. Mm -hmm. And it's just like the Lord spoke to me one time. I was in a situation. I won't go into all the details. Almost done. But He just said, "You are not the wind beneath their wings. Mm. I am the wind mm -hmm. beneath their wings. Mm -hmm. Only I can make them fly." And mm -hmm. one other thing he said, you're not even the wind beneath your own wings. Mm -hmm. Without me, you're nothing. And when you mm -hmm. said that, that just brought that to me. So all we can do is what God commands us to do. Right. right. And, and understand that it's not us to make it happen. It's just us to obey that God will do what God will do. Amen. 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 I receive from you both. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so we're getting ready to leave out of here. And um, um, Regina, you want to close us out with a good mm -hmm. prayer? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yes, I will. Amen. Father God, we thank you this evening, oh God. We thank you for this time that you have set aside, oh God, that we will come together even through this Zoom meeting, oh God. Learn of your word, oh God. Learn of your ways, oh God. Father God, we thank you for um, our pastor today, our pastors, because this wouldn't happen without the both of them, oh God. Mm -hmm. We thank you right now for them um, and having the vision to have these meetings, these ladies' meetings, these peer groups, oh God, whereas we can talk freely, oh God. We can get to know you, God. We can get to love you even more by your word, oh God. I just thank you right now for every woman who is assembled today on this uh, virtual channel chat, oh God, and I thank you for how you've allowed your word to come forward, oh God. I just thank you right now. I'm sorry, yes. I'm just I'm just, I just got a thankful heart right now, oh God, and I praise you and I honor you, and I pray that as we depart tonight, we will not depart from you, oh God. I pray for restful sleep upon everyone who's attended this meeting tonight. Oh God, we love you so much, and these and all blessings we ask in thy son Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 God bless y'all, and good night. See you soon. Good night. <laughs> okay, good night. Thank you.